Good afternoon, everyone. I am back in the beautiful state of Georgia. After a really great week-long trip to the High Plains, um, you'll be seeing that video before this one, so um, it'll be self-explanatory. But either way, I had a blast out there, but I'm happy to be home for a couple more weeks to start chasing unicorns once again. I'm out here in an area that is known to have pine snakes and all sorts of other goodies close to my house, and uh, I'm gonna just drive around tonight and see if anything's crossing the road, so. Um, it's real hot. We're, we're in a real hot stretch of weather here. It's gonna be mid 90s all week um, So I might get out and do a little bit of turtling at some point, but it's gonna be a lot of road cruising for this week's video So uh, bear with me here as we hope for some cooler weather to come here soon um, But anyways, I'm gonna get to it and I will let you guys know if we see anything All right guys first find of the day today is an uncommon dirt road cruise. I don't find much on dirt here hardly ever uh, but we got a nice little rat snake here to start the afternoon. He was just starting to slip off the road on that side when I spotted him. But either way, juvenile rat snake, these tend to be one of the more common snakes I see out here in this area when I'm road cruising. So not too much of a surprise to see this guy first thing tonight. However, I do drive this amazing looking dirt road a lot and hardly ever see anything on it. So it's definitely a welcome sight to see this guy crossing it this afternoon. But uh, see if I can pick him up. Really handsome little rat snake, nice and healthy. Um, I'm just gonna escort him off the road and keep moving though. First snake back in Georgia from the Colorado trip. He's got some really nice looking pattern on him too. Good looking snake. But a uh, nice little gray rat snake to start off the night. Come on, I'm trying to get you to go off the road, dude. Chill out. All right. Yes, musk me. Good idea. Alrighty, let's see what else is out. All right, guys, it's just now finally getting fully dark and I just cruised my first snake after the sun went down. This is a nice little juvenile copperhead, probably eight inches long. Uh, this guy was born last year. One of the really awesome things about these guys is they have these neon little tails that they use for caudal luring, which is basically, uh, they use it like a fishing lure. They sit there and wiggle it until something comes to eat it and then they eat whatever they lured in. So either way, really cool little snakes. Happy to see this guy. Uh, we might see another one or two tonight, so I'm just gonna escort him off the road and keep moving. But first snake after dark, a nice little copperhead. I love it when they move themselves off the road. It's really nice because these little ones definitely do not hook very well and I don't have my tweezers with me. So keep on, keep going, keep going, go on. All right, I'm gonna move them on my hook. I am in absolute disbelief at what I'm seeing right now. This is the craziest snake I have ever found in the wild, and it's not even close. That is a wild albino corn snake. A wild albino corn snake. When I, when I saw it from the car, I wasn't even sure what I was looking at. I mean, I thought it was... I thought it was some kind of stick or something because it just glowed bright white in the road. Like neon white. It's an albino corn snake in the wild. I mean, this is this road is super remote. There's a couple of houses on it. And the chances of this being an escaped pet are almost zero because it is illegal to have corn snakes in the state of Georgia. That is so insane. What an incredible looking animal. Even if this snake was an albino, this would still be a good find. I mean, corn snakes around here are really cool. Um, <laughs> just look at that. I am in disbelief right now. That is insane. Absolutely insane. What's up, dude? Oh my god, I cannot believe what I'm seeing. Ah, oh, what on earth? I just, I, this is one of those things that, like, I've always considered as a possibility but I was fully prepared to go my entire life without ever finding a wild albino snake or any wild more. I thought it was a mole king too, because I got out of the car and I was like, wow, that thing is vibrant. The corns around here are generally pretty dull, um, but no, it's just albino. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, that's a good way to start the night. I guess I'm gonna keep cruising. That is insane. All right, everyone, I got the video light out so you can see this guy a little bit better before we let him go. This is one of the craziest things I've ever found. I mean, I've always considered the possibility of finding an albino snake, but I mean, this is like finding a shiny Pokemon in real life. It's one of those things where if you find enough of any one species, I mean, statistically, you're eventually gonna find some sort of crazy looking morph. 
Um, he looks really good in this video light, too. What an amazing looking little snake. A lot of people might argue that this snake would die in the wild, but the simple truth is it's not very uncommon to see albino snakes. Um, it's uncommon for someone who's actually looking for and appreciating them to see them, but wild albino snakes turn up fairly often in snake ID groups and just random people find them all the time. After all, this is just another genetic mutation, like having brown hair or blue eyes, etc. Despite his color morph, corn snakes are quite heavily nocturnal, so I doubt that his lack of effective camouflage is going to be that big of a deal in the long run. And like I said, I've seen plenty of pictures of wild adult albino snakes. It isn't the end of the world for a snake to be albino. So anyways, I'm just going to move this guy across the road and keep cruising. That is an absolutely insane way to start the night. Just insane. Well, guys, I don't think we're going to be able to top yesterday, but we're sure going to try. Um, I was heading out to my roads to cruise. I'm still on the road I live on. And uh, we're already on the board for the day. There's another little rat snake to start off the afternoon. About the same. This one's a little smaller than the one yesterday, I guess. But I wasn't even sure if this was a snake. I turned around for it three times before I decided to actually get out of the car and see what it was. Because I kept thinking it was a stick. Um, and that... You'll see he's doing that kinking behavior that a lot of people often ask me about. And that's exactly why they do it, because it makes them look more like a stick. If you were walking along and saw this out of the corner of your eye on the forest floor, you probably wouldn't even recognize it as a snake. But either way, really cool behavior, really cool little rat snake. I'm just going to move this guy across the road in the direction he's heading and keep cruising. Great way to start the night. What's up, dude? All right, let's get you going the other direction. I'm really, if I was expecting to see an albino anything around here, I'd probably say this would be the species I'd expect to see because they're the snake I see the most of when I'm road cruising. But uh, either way, really cool. I'm just gonna leave him to it and keep moving. Well, it's gonna be getting dark here soon, so hopefully the snake movement will be decent tonight. Uh, it wasn't terrible last night. I just got distracted by that corn snake and. Uh, by the time I was finished messing around with it and taking pictures and stuff, it was already pretty late. And uh, snake activity cuts off pretty early in the night here, generally well before midnight, unlike out west where snakes will move until the sun starts to come up in the morning. Um, so makes road cruising out here a little bit more sh short-lived, I guess, which is nice because I don't have to bother driving back and forth all night long. Um, there's a big, big movement die off around uh, 1130 to midnight. So anyways, hopefully snakes will be out tonight too. I'm gonna keep you guys posted. Oh, it's gonna be one of these nights. Armadillo number one. And the first snake after dark is yet another one of these guys. Like I was saying, generally the most common snake I see on the road at night. So I'm just gonna escort this guy off. This guy's super healthy, um, nice and thick. So I'm gonna help him off in the direction he was heading. You're not a snake, brother. Hello. What's up, dude? <laughs> This eastern mud turtle is just out tearing around in the road. What on earth, dude? Where are you going? Dude, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> Anyways. All right, well, I picked him up to try to show him to you guys, and he sucked into his shell, so I don't know if we're going to get a good look at this guy or not, but eastern mud turtle, kind of weird. Not something I was expecting to see tonight, so uh, either way, pretty cool, though. I'm going to move. There's a little bit of a creek here, so not too surprising he's crossing right here, I guess. But generally, you don't see these guys on the road at night. Really strange, so. Anyways, I'm going to move him over to the other side and keep moving. But Easter Mud Turtle, next turp of the night. This is very deja vu-y. <laughs> Another baby copperhead. It's just the season of the baby rat snakes and baby copperheads, apparently. Except for all these snakes were born in the fall, and I guess they just had a very good survival rate over the winter, which is good news uh, for the overall snake population. But I keep thinking the copperheads are pygmies when I cruise them, and they're not. But uh, either way, really cool. Beautiful little baby copperhead. Uh, we saw one last night. I think this one's a little bit prettier than the one last night. But either way, really cool to see. I'm just going to escort this guy across the road and keep moving. Uh, it's about, I think it's about 10 o'clock right now, so I'll probably cruise for another hour or so and see if anything else is out. Alright guys, well that might be it for the night. It seems like stuff is kind of cut off. Um, I'm on my way home now, but if I see anything, I'll stop obviously. 
Uh, but yeah, it was a little bit slower tonight. I think we ended up getting the same amount of snakes, but uh, the lacking of an albino corn snake kind of made it feel like it was a little bit less successful. Uh, but either way, we saw some cool stuff. I can't complain about it. It's a bright full moon, which a lot of people think is bad for snake movement. I haven't personally found any evidence to confirm or deny that. Uh, it seems like I see decent numbers of snakes on full moon nights, especially if the, the rest of the weather is good for them um, and it's the right time of year. So either way, I'm probably gonna cruise again tomorrow um, and try to wrap this video up, make it kind of like a three night cruising vlog. Um, I might try to go out tomorrow afternoon a little bit earlier and try to cruise a cane break over in the next county over. So, um, either way, if I see anything else on the way home, I'll stop. But if not, I will see you guys tomorrow afternoon. So I just got a home and that's the tree frog pool where the tree frogs breed. And it was super quiet and I was wondering why. And I look over and there's a barred owl just chilling, snacking on tree frogs. Good for you, bro. That is awesome. Just hanging out in my yard. We've had a lot of great owl encounters this year, so I'm just going to take my light off of him and let him continue his business. That's super cool. Hello everyone, this is going to be my first video back from having my camera bag stolen, which I'm sure most of you regular viewers are familiar with the situation with that at this point. But anyways, this is not going to be a video about that. This is hopefully going to be the first normal vlog um, since I lost all my gear. I got my new phone in the mail today. I got it set up. It took all day to get this thing set up and ready to rock, but I can actually film now. I don't have any of my gear replaced yet, so I don't have a camera, I don't have a camera bag, don't have a GoPro, uh, but I do have my iPhone, which is the bare minimum I need to make videos, so. This is my most important tool as a YouTuber and herper. Uh, it allows me to get where I need to go and record what happens in the process. So, uh, at the very least, I have this now and I can get back to work. So I'm going to start this process by getting out the house today. We finally got a little bit of rain yesterday. It's been a super dry month of May here so far in Georgia, um, which has made it a little bit lackluster from a herping perspective. But it has been an incredible month all around, just mostly a lot of out-of-state travel, which has been incredibly fun and productive. But uh, the local herping has been a little bit frustratingly slow. Either way, I'm going to flip here at the house. I'm going to start with this big thing that never has anything under it, despite how awesome it looks. And we'll see how this goes. You can see there's a little moisture under here from the rain. No snakes, though. Just a bunch of ants. All right, guys. We are on the board. These little pieces of slate here in my yard that never have anything under them actually produce today. This is a little smooth earth snake. These guys are obviously a pretty common find around here. We see them a lot, but a uh, pretty good way to start the day. They're generally a good sign that snakes are undercover, so... So anyway, it's really cool. Nice to see this guy under here. This is the first thing I've actually found under these little slate things since I put them out. Um, I didn't actually intend for these to be put here for snakes. They're just kind of in limbo until I find somewhere that I want to put them. But either way, this is actually a kind of interesting looking earth snake. He's just different looking from the ones I normally see around here for some reason. I can't really put my finger on why. I guess it's because he doesn't have any pattern on him at all. Normally they have like little dots on him or something. But this guy is just really light in coloration and doesn't have any spots on his back. A lot of the ones this size do, but really cool little snakes. Super short and stout eaters of earthworms and slugs and all that other stuff. So I'm just going to let him go back under his little piece right here and keep flipping, see what else I can turn up. So one of the cool things about this time of year is all the lizards and a lot of the snakes are grabbing and getting ready to lay their eggs. Like this girl here, you can see she's twice as wide as she normally should be because she's probably got four or five little eggs in there that she's going to lay, hopefully under this board where I found her. Um, but really cool. This is a five-line skink, common five-line skink. Her tail got broke off by something. It was rel I didn't do that. It was relatively recently agitated by something else, so kind of interesting, but I'll put her back. snake's still hanging out. That guy's been there for months. I haven't even flipped this in like at least a couple of weeks and he's still there. I want to say the last time I flipped this was back in like April and sure enough this guy's still here. 
But yeah, resident eastern worm snake. We're just going to leave them right there. Next snake of the day. I like how this piece is getting some good dappled light. It hasn't produced anything since I put it out, but I feel like it's going to be a better summer piece than anything, so we'll see. It has, oh, ring neck. So there we go, first snake under this. I was kind of right. That is a very fat and happy southern ring neck snake. I have flipped a lot of slimy salamanders under this, but this is the first snake I've gotten under it. This appears to be yet another gravid female animal. She's, uh, you can see she's got a short little tail there and a super thick, healthy body weight. Um, definitely looks like she might be carrying some eggs in there. So we're gonna put her back. Three species of snake here on this quick walk so far. Not bad at all. This piece has been pretty unproductive since I set it out. I've only seen one snake under it, so. Oh, two snakes today of two different species. What on earth? A red belly and a worm snake under it, right there. And it's a different red belly than the one I usually find here. And of course, there's yet another red belly right there that I didn't even see at first. So red belly, worm, red belly. Triple flip under this piece of tan. There's four, there's another red bellied snake right there, dude. What even? I'm not, they just keep materializing. I'm not even seeing them, they're just popping up. So we have, I'm gonna keep staring in case there's more that I'm not seeing, but I mean, there's four snakes of two different species under here. I don't see anybody else. I think it's just those four, but wow. I can't believe I didn't notice those two. Like these two caught my eye, even though those two were much bigger and more colorful. But that's awesome that this piece is finally producing. I'm gonna pull these red bellies out and get a better look at them because they're cool, but a worm snake right there, I'll just leave him. So red bellied snakes are fairly common here. We see them re relatively regularly and the black face is also pretty common here, but I don't think I've ever flipped three under one piece here at the house before. And these are such awesome looking variable, just really cool little snakes. Another interesting thing about this is these two larger ones are absolutely titanic. They're, uh, I mean, they're just gigantic for red-bellied snakes. All three of them are lip curling, which is this really strange defense mechanism they do where they just curl their upper lip up and expose their teeth. But they're so tiny that it's hard to show on camera. But you can see that brilliant belly coloration right there. And then, there we go. Let's see if we can see that defense display. You can see he's got his lip curled up and you can kind of see his teeth through there. But really cool. That was an awesome flip. I'm curious to see if you guys also noticed the same two I did while completely overlooking the two more obvious ones. Really strange how when you're flipping, sometimes your mind registers on different snakes than you would expect. And unfortunately, that is how a lot of people get bit by venomous snakes when they're herping because they'll see like a milk snake under a piece of tin and they'll go to grab it and not notice the copperhead sitting right next to it. That flip was all harmless snakes, but there are plenty of places where it's not uncommon to see two or three snakes under a piece of tin where one or two of them is gonna be venomous. Um, my yard is not one of those places. We rarely see venomous snakes here, so um, not too much to worry about. I wish I saw them more often because it'd be really cool. All right, well, we're just going to let these three crawl back under their tin, and hopefully we'll see them a couple more times over the course of the next few weeks. So most of the things that I flipped today that had snakes under them were things that I didn't flip last time I flipped around the house. Some days I'll just do a quick pass and flip, like, the big stuff that I think might could have a king snake under it. Um, and that's what I did last time I came out here and didn't see anything at all, so... I did flip this stuff though, so I'm curious to see if this will have anything under it that moved under it since I flipped it last. Lots of scorpions, but there's always lots of scorpions under here. Look at that guy. But there's just there's just dozens of scorpions under here. It's crazy how many of them are using these pieces here. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any snakes in here. And there weren't any last time I flipped it, so. Look at this little guy. 
That is a freshly metamorphed marbled salamander. That is cool. This guy is only about an inch or two long. You can see. He doesn't look quite like a normal marbled salamander. These guys go through quite the ontogenetic color change between, I guess, when they first metamorph and when they turn into an adult marbled. They get this really cool speckly blue look to them when they're this size. And then they'll grow into a typical marbled salamander look as they get older. But really cool. These guys are probably going to be everywhere over the next week or so. Probably alongside lots of little spotted salamanders too. Because these guys generally all emerge from the vernal pools around the same time. Uh, which is generally when they start to dry up. Because the drying of the pools is what pressures them to metamorph into adults. Really cool little guy. We'll probably see a couple more over the next couple days. So I'm not going to spend too much time with him. But a little marbled salamander hanging out under one of my boards. Ring neck. The snakes are making themselves kind of hard to see under cover today. They're just not sitting in the places I normally expect to see them. Kind of weird. I think this little ring neck is the first snake I've seen in this little board pile that isn't a king snake. I might have seen another ring neck or two that I'm forgetting about, but either way, tons of snakes out here at the house today. This is definitely the snakiest day I've had here so far this year, even though we haven't really found anything crazy yet. There he goes. All right. Another red-bellied snake. What on earth? It's the first snake I found under this piece of tin, too. And it's another black one. Look at that. I have never... I'm not sure I've ever seen this many snakes in one day here. I mean... My, my house is a very good area to herp, but it's only good because I live here and I hit it so often I've been able to, you know, put in the work necessary to see the cool stuff that lives here. But, like, it's not ever the kind of place that I could even guarantee we'd ever see one snake if I go out flipping. So it's super strange to see this many snakes in one day, especially this many red-bellied snakes. And there are all these beautiful black phases, which is... I mean, they're fairly common here, but it still seems like the normal red bellies are more common uh, throughout the year. It seems like that's the color, the normal brown ones are the normal color variation for this area. But either way, really interesting. Red bellied snake number four for the day. And under this piece of tin that I've never actually found anything under, another recently laid piece. Uh, it might just be so that a lot of this recently laid stuff is just now getting to the point where snakes are finding it and using it. And that could kind of explain why it's been so productive today. But either way, red-bellied snake number four. All right, guys, I'm down to my last two sets. I decided I was going to hit basically everything today because this has been one of the best numbers days I've ever had here. And I think we're sitting at eight snakes, and I wanted to get to ten. I'm optimistic because we found a lot of snakes today in places where I don't normally see them, so maybe we'll see some stuff here. But stack number one, and probably the least good looking of the two, nobody. I actually lied, I forgot about the earth snakes, so I think we're at a total of nine snakes. And that's probably where it's going to end, because I'm out of stuff to flip, unfortunately. But nine snakes, real good day for around here. Probably one of the best I've ever had. So. I have family stuff to do tomorrow afternoon, so it's going to be a quick little morning outing, but hopefully we'll be able to find some snakes, so I will see you guys then.